this Yamaha EF4500 ISE. Taking a look at it, and customer brought it in and said that he wants to leave this afternoon, going to Florida to help the hurricane victims. Uh, he's got a buddy that lives down there. He's going to help clean up efforts and everything like that. But he wants this thing back up and going. It'll start and run, but it doesn't sound so hot. Let me see if I can't quickly get this thing back up and going for him and get him down there where he needs to help out. Hit that like and subscribe button as we go along if you enjoy the content. First thing you want to do on something like this is you want to check the oil. On the back access panel, there is a place to check the oil. I did do that. It's got good oil level in it. The oil looks good. Now, this thing only has 61 hours on it. He said that a buddy did try to clean the carburetor. Based on the way that it's acting, I'm not really so sure. Got the gas on. You hear that kind of almost pop out of the exhaust. It is running, but it sounds extremely, extremely rough and almost like it's either choking out or not quite getting enough fuel. These uh, electronic controlled throttles and stuff, they act a little bit goofy if you've got a carburetor issue. That's what we're going to check out first. Now, if yours isn't starting at all, you want to check the spark. Make sure you're getting a good spark. You'll also want to make sure that the fuel quality is good, that you don't have any water or anything like that in it. Uh, the cables on the battery on this will need to be tight also. If they're loose at all, that can cause you major issues on one that's electronically controlled. We've got two Phillips head screws at the bottom here. We'll need to take off in order to get into the access panel. And then this whole thing pulls out and straight down, kind of out at an angle. Both of your screws will fall out. Just little flanged screws. Got a little spacer there at the top. And now I've got access to the whole engine here. Of course, your oil fill tube is actually on the other side. So you've got your spark plug up here, carburetor here. The battery is on the other side also. I am gonna check those connections real quick before we go much further. fill tube here where you can check again plenty of oil in it levels good doesn't look bad you've got your drain plug down at the bottom if you need to uh, change the oil you can just loosen this and it'll drain through the bottom there's a little access port down below it lets it drain out under the machine as long as you've got it up into something Battery connections are very loose. I'm going to start with tightening those up. Got to be careful if you already have the negative hooked up and you're trying to tighten this positive not to ground out against them. Tighten it up real good. Again, don't touch any metal. Yeah, that thing was pretty loose. All right. Tighten our negative here real loose too. If your ground wire is loose, sometimes it'll cause weird electrical issues. It'll cause it to run kind of odd. All right. I'm going to start it up just for the heck of it, see if that changed anything. Very highly doubt it did. <laughs> Almost like it sounds a little bit better. Still kind of just not right. I'm gonna pull this plug and check it just for the heck of it also. I 
always check the easy things first. Well, that thing's not even tight in there. I think it was just loose. Definitely got some carbon buildup on it. I've got a BPR4ES here. Throw a new one in there. See if that changed anything. <laughs> basically the same now I know this fella and I know he uses good gas but he did say he bought this not that long ago from someone he only paid $500 for it so you know that that person probably thought there was some sort of issue or another we're going to try to just pull the bowl off the carburetor since he's leaving here in just a couple hours see if I can't get it cleaned out from the bottom side without doing anything further I'm gonna drain just take the uh Phillips head here loose and drain some out the bottom just to see what kind of fuel we're dealing with first. It's just this Phillips head screw at the back. Fuel doesn't look perfect, but it doesn't look horrible either. Not really too worried about the fuel quality. I don't see anything in the bottom of it, moisture or anything like that. It does not smell so hot. Turn this fuel off and go ahead and drain the rest of what's in the bowl so I can pull that bowl without it spilling all over the place. So as we look here at the bottom of the carburetor, it doesn't look like it's been cleaned or anything like that. It's still kind of kind of filthy. I'm just gonna take that bottom 10 millimeter bolt off. All right. It's definitely not real clean. And there's the jet in this thing is actually right here in the bottom nut. That's the jet that feeds fuel to the entire carburetor. Get my drill bit set here. See what size we got. Yeah, I mean, it seems pretty well clear. All the way up to my largest bit. Fits down through there, no problem. Just going to clean that out, make sure that there is nothing stuck in there. Now you can try to get that out of there. I was thinking about doing it with this screwdriver, but it seems like it's already kind of a nil point. It's kind of stuck. And you don't really need to because it's just this main jet. So there's nothing out to the side or anything. Again, I don't think it was really dirty. Use a flashlight through one of the holes and you should be able to see a perfect circle down there. And you can. It looks great, perfectly clear. Let's take that bowl off next. Came off pretty easy. Definitely doesn't look real clean. Piece of something right there. It doesn't look perfect by any means.
throw a rag down at the bottom just to catch any of this as I put some starting food all over it or carburetor cleaner we're gonna take out that main jet that goes up through many times I use like to use just a piece of a one of those uh, like universal or utility screwdrivers they fit up in there usually nice and they've got a nice good square to them to get that brass out and I just push it up hard and use a 5 16th in order to turn it there we go broke loose nice Get that emulsion tube out see what it looks like oh boy so the emulsion tube still has a bunch of stuff all around it doesn't look like it was cleaned real well I'm gonna spray up in there get anything remaining out we're gonna clean this real good wire brush pull just a loom out of here as I always do. I'm just gonna clean that real well through all these little holes. That one was completely plugged up. Usually don't take much to get all that stuff out of there. Just kind of work them around. And whether it's starting or it's not starting or anything else, this could definitely be your issue. There'll be a hole down through the center also. Use that same drill bit. Yeah, it's definitely dirty in there. It's not been cleaned well, if it was clean. Got all that stuff coming out. Looks like a good spray now <laughs> out of everywhere and there's nothing left on it all those are clean you can see straight through them if you look into the light all clear all clear down through the center Let's put this thing back in see what happens Don't want it super tight in there, but you do want it to be tight enough. Kind of snug it up. Now, as soon as you turn this ignition on and try to start this, you should see that there's a solenoid here. You should see that retract. <laughs> no, I didn't see it do anything. Not seeing that solenoid in there actually do anything when we're trying to start it. wonder if the solenoid... Yeah, it's a 12. Alright. Got that broke 
freeing out should just unscrew easily. So this is the after fire solenoid. Basically when you shut down your unit, this plunger pulls back. Oh. So this plunger is completely stuck. It's not going anywhere at all. Oop, there goes my little washer. We want to make sure that gets on there. Let's see if I can't. Yeah. All right. Got him nice and freed up now. Let's clean that with a little wire brush. Just all around there so it can move freely. So basically this was probably shutting off the majority of the fuel supply instead of allowing it to go through since it was stuck in the out position. That thing is just free as can be now. real good you don't want anything else on there you can use that plunger quite a bit get everything that's up in there off again now that's free and then this bowl a little bit more Now that we've got this all cleared out, let's put this back together and see what happens. Put our jet up through. Bottom bolt and main jet. Fire this thing up and see what happens. See what we get out of it. Fuels to on. This runs perfectly now. Well, there you have it. Something as simple as an emulsion tube not being completely cleaned or an after fire solenoid being stuck can cause an issue like this very easily and cause it not to run right. Hopefully this has helped you out get your generator back into working condition. And now at least he can get this thing back down to Florida to help them out during this hurricane cleanup. 
Thanks so much for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the content.